Hi there. In today's quick tip, we're going to have a quick look at how we can um, control modifiers with textures. So Blender's modifier system is really cool and you can do some fun stuff with it. But um, I feel like uh, I haven't seen a lot of people do some of the stuff that I do with it. So I want to clarify a little bit on how you can control um, modifiers with textures. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is just a very basic plane. Um, this has been subdivided a couple of times, nothing special. Uh, I'm going to show you very quickly how it works and I've got two examples I'm going to go through. Uh, one, another basic one, another more advanced one. So the first thing you want to do to get this started is actually add a vertex weight edit modifier. Now generally what this does is if you have vertex weights already or vertex groups already on your mesh, you can control them using a curve and stuff and you can mess about with them. But I've actually found that you can also add in um, weights just by using textures. Now, to make sure that this works, the first thing we're going to have to do here is add in a, um, a vertex group. So I'm just going to call this solidify. There we go. And um, I'm going to choose the vertex group solidify here. So that way we're basically telling uh, this modifier, okay, I want you to do all the stuff that we're going to do into this vertex group, and I want you to affect this vertex group. Now, to set this effect up, um, you might think just to click texture mask here and go into the texture. And let's say, uh, let's select like a clouds texture or something, something basic, nothing special, and you're done. Well, not really. Um, basically what this is doing now is if there was anything in this vertex group, then you could um, sort of change the weights and stuff uh, from it using the texture. What I want to do is actually use this texture to control this vertex group. As you might have noticed, I didn't put any anything in there. I didn't paint anything or I didn't add them in here. On edit mode, I didn't assign anything. So right now this vertex group is empty and we want to populate it with the texture, um, with using the texture and uh, adding those vertices in. So I found that if you go into this menu over here, into the custom curve, you flip the curve, very simple, and I'm gonna enable the group add and remove, so all the black parts and white parts of the texture will actually add stuff into this vertex group. What we can do now is add on other modifiers and use the solidify um, vertex group that I made to control stuff. So I'm gonna add in a solidify, and that's sort of the reason why I called it that. Let's say I'm gonna set this thickness to minus one, so it pushes out, or even minus five. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this solidify thing over here. So what's happening now is this texture is driving the solidify modifier. So if I increase the size here to two, you can see now all of a sudden if I go to different ones, you can actually start messing around with these. So when you think about something like a displace modifier that you can drive with the texture, now all of a sudden all of the other modifiers that you can use vertex groups with are able to be affected as well. So let's say I change this, for example, and we get these really crazy shapes. And you can control them by using this color ramp over here, for example. So you can bring them in, push them out. And as you can see, it gets really, really interesting. Um, you could go even further and add more, um, more modifiers on top of this. So let's say, let's add in a smooth modifier, for example. And you're able just to affect those, uh, those parts that are being pushed up. So if we pre repeat it quite a bit, you'll see that depending on the texture, actually the um, where the solidify gets pushed up, it's get, it gets smooth as well. And uh, where the texture is black and there's no solidify happening, it doesn't get smoothed out. So this allows for some really cool control. And um, I'll just show you two other examples that I created very quickly. And uh, you'll see exactly how this becomes interesting. So the first example here is just a, a cube, which I subdivided a few times. And uh, I added a, mod a wireframe modifier. And as you can see, I added in the texture vertex group here, which is being affected um, by my mask.cube texture. And uh, you'll be able to download this file as well to have a look at it yourself. And as you can see, we have this interesting texture. But what I added on to this is I made sure that I used the object texture coordinates and I grabbed the cube, um, the control.cube object, which is this one. Now this is actually linked to a rail. So this is following the path of the rail. And if I hit play now, you can see that texture is actually being projected onto the wireframe. And this suddenly opens up a really cool uh, way of animating stuff and doing some really interesting things. So as you can see, this is another very simple example. And all we really had to do is just add in the vertex weight, set it up correctly, add in the texture, and then have uh, some other modifiers 
doing some extra stuff here. Now, the third example is a little bit more advanced. And here you see this really interesting looking mesh. And um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm gonna turn off all these modifiers for a sec, because you can see there's quite a few. But if I turn all of these off, then we're gonna start very simply. This is just a plane that has been subdivided. And uh, the only other thing I've done here is in the edge menu, I've um, actually set, oh, sorry. I've actually split all these edges. I'll just wait for that to disappear. There you go. So these are actually all individual polygons that aren't stuck to each other. So if I move around, you can see they're actually not stuck to each other. That's still fairly important for the, the other parts of it, but it's just so you know where I'm starting from. So again, I've got the same setup where I have this extra control object. So I've got the control.plane object and a rail that it's moving over. Um, if you're wondering how I did that, Again, it's just another object constraint. So you have you can animate it over the path and I've got this offset animated, that's all it is. And now we can start layering on all these different modifiers. So first thing I did is I just copied it 10 times. As you can see, all it is is just that plane um, copied 10 times. Then I've added in the vertex weight. And in this case, uh, just to show you there it is, it's just a constant offset, nothing special. In this case, I called it displace. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but you just have to make sure that you know, uh, you're know not getting confused and giving everything the same name, because otherwise it will get confusing if you have multiple objects um, with all the same naming schemes. And again, I've set this up the same way, put in the vertex group, um, turn on group, add and group, remove, so we can both take uh, away from the vertex group and add into the vertex group, and then hitting this up with custom curve, flipping it around, and putting in another different texture. Now this texture is just a clouds texture, and I wanted to give you some more options. So you can control this using the ramp and the contrast and brightness and all this stuff, and we'll all affect it very nicely. Now, after I did that, what I'm gonna do is add in a mask. So what this does is basically takes all the white portions, I believe, of the, um, of the texture that we're using and just deletes them because we're using that vertex group. You could even flip it around if you wanted to. But I didn't do that uh, just to show you another little trick you can do with it. Then what I did is did the same thing, but because we flipped this curve again, now our vertex group is actually inverted. So we can use the first vertex group to um, take away from the mesh and then flip that same vertex group la later down the stack to actually get the inverse result. And now we can do other stuff with it. And if we look at that, then for this around, this doesn't really change anything to the mesh, but it just means that our texture is actually, our vertex group has actually been flipped in this next step. Then I'm using the smooth modifier, which is really cool. Um, if you use it on all these disconnected faces, then they actually become a lot smaller and they start shrinking. Um, and it gives you this effect of this mesh that seems to be sort of contracting and expanding. And then I just added in a solidify modifier that didn't even have that in there um, because I'm already, I'm already controlling that with the smooth. Now, Cool thing is if I play this now, it's a little bit slow, but as you can see, you get this really cool intricate result. And I did, I set this up in like two minutes. So imagine having to try and model this and animate it somehow, that would really suck. And this trick has saved me a lot of time um, lately and, and you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. So I wanna just put this out there quickly and um, yeah, get your creative juices flowing. Um, that being said, if you find some really cool combos that you know haven't been shown in this video, obviously you can go really far. There's a lot of modifiers that actually take um, take a vertex group input. Then yeah, you can do some super cool stuff. And if you find stuff that you that's really interesting, um, feel free to comment below. And uh, that's about it for this one. So the link will be um, link will be in the description for the file for you to take a look at. And that's it for now. So thanks for watching, and see you later.